This video will explain the tech of transformer architecture. Divided into five parts. Components of the transformer model. Self-attention in transformer. How does the self-attention mechanism improve the performance of the decoder? What are the benefits of using multiple encoder and decoder layers in a transformer? The importance of positional encodings in transformer models. Let's dive into one of the most important innovations in the world of artificial intelligence, the transformer architecture. Introduced by Vaswani et al. in 2017 in their groundbreaking paper, Attention is All You Need, transformers have completely transformed how we work with data, especially in natural language processing. This model has even made its way into other fields like computer vision and beyond. So, what exactly is the transformer, and why is it so powerful? The transformer model is built around two main parts, the encoder and the decoder. Let's break down each component. First, tokenization and embedding layer. For tokenization, we take the input text and break it down into smaller chunks or tokens. These tokens could be whole words or even smaller subwords. For embedding layer, after tokenizing the text, we convert each token into a vector a list of numbers that represents its meaning in a mathematical form. Now, transformers also need to understand the order of these tokens, so we add something called positional encodings to the tokens. This tells the model where each token sits in the sequence. Second, transformers are structured around an encoder-decoder framework. For encoder, the encoder's job is to read and understand the input sequence. It turns the input into a set of continuous representations. The encoder is made up of several identical layers. The original model had six of these layers. Inside each layer you'll find multi-head self-attention. This is the magic behind transformers. It helps the model figure out how important each token is in relation to others in the sequence, capturing complex relationships. Feed-forward neural network. Once the attention mechanism has worked its magic, each token is passed through a neural network that processes each token independently. Residual connections and layer normalization. These techniques help keep the training stable and improve performance. They ensure that information can flow smoothly through the network. For decoder. The decoder is responsible for generating the output sequence based on what the encoder has learned. Like the encoder, it consists of several identical layers, each with Masked multi-head self-attention. This ensures that the model doesn't cheat by looking ahead at tokens during training. It can only attend to earlier tokens in the sequence. Cross-attention layer. This layer lets the decoder focus on the relevant parts of the encoder's output when producing each token in the output. Feed-forward neural network. Similar to the encoder, the decoder processes the output from the attention layers here. However, there are two important mechanisms attention mechanism, and positional encoding. For the attention mechanism, self-attention is the core innovation of transformers. It allows the model to focus on different parts of the input sequence when processing each token. Let's break it down further. Each token in the input sequence looks at all other tokens to decide how much focus it should place on each. This is done through three key components for each token. Query. What this token is looking for from other tokens. Key. What other tokens have to offer to this token. Value. The actual information that the token holds. The attention mechanism computes a score between each token and every other token, which helps the model aggregate information dynamically from all tokens in the sequence. For positional encoding. Transformers do not have the inherent ability to understand the order of tokens, unlike RNN so we add positional encodings to the token embeddings. These encodings are typically sinusoidal functions that tell the model about the position of each token in the sequence. This allows the transformer to maintain the sequence's structure while processing everything in parallel. Why transformers are so powerful? And why have transformers become so popular? Here are a few key reasons. Parallel processing. Unlike RNN, which process data one step at a time, transformers can process the entire sequence at once. This makes training much faster. Long-range dependencies. 
With self-attention, transformers can capture relationships between tokens that are far apart, something RNN struggle with due to issues like vanishing gradients. Scalability. Transformers are highly scalable. You can add more layers and parameters to improve performance, making them suitable for complex tasks. Next, let us discuss the concept of self-attention in encoders and decoders in detail. This mechanism plays a key role in both the encoder and decoder parts of the model, but it works slightly differently in each to serve specific purposes. I'll walk you through the differences between how self-attention is used in the encoder and the decoder. In the encoder, self-attention is used to understand relationships and context across the entire input sequence. The encoder applies a standard self-attention mechanism, meaning each token can look at every other token in the input sequence. This helps the model understand how tokens relate to one another, even if they're far apart in the sequence. For input, each token starts as a vector that represents its meaning. These embeddings are also combined with positional encodings to help the model understand the order of tokens in the sequence. Each token, the model generates three vectors, query, key, and value. It then calculates the attention scores by taking the dot product of the query and key, followed by a scaling and softmax operation to get the final attention weights. These weights are used to create a weighted sum of the value vectors, with more attention paid to the tokens that are more relevant to the current token. For output, the output from the self-attention mechanism is a set of contextualized representations for each token. These representations now contain information from the entire sequence, and they get passed to the next layer in the encoder. In the decoder, self-attention is used in two types of attention mechanisms, depending on the phase of the prediction. Masked self-attention. This prevents the model from looking ahead at future tokens in the sequence. For example, when predicting the next word, the token can only look at itself and the previous tokens. This ensures that the model doesn't cheat and peek at the future. Cross-attention. After processing the masked self-attention, the decoder can then attend to the output from the encoder. This is known as encoder-decoder attention or cross-attention. It allows the decoder to focus on specific parts of the input sequence while generating the output. For decoder input, similar to the encoder, the decoder starts with token embeddings and positional encodings. However, the decoder begins with an initial start token and generates the output in an autoregressive manner, one token at a time, based on previous tokens. For decoder attention calculation, in masked self-attention, the decoder's queries can only attend to the tokens that have already been predicted or generated, ensuring predictions are based only on known data. In cross-attention, the decoder's queries are derived from the previous layer's output while the keys and values come from the encoder's output. This helps the decoder use the information it learned from the entire input sequence. For decoder output, after processing through both self-attention and cross-attention, the decoder generates the output. The final predictions are passed through a linear layer, followed by softmax, to get the probabilities for predicting the next token. To make it clearer, here's a quick comparison of self-attention in the encoder and decoder. Next, let's break down how the self-attention mechanism enhances the decoder and transformer architectures. This is a key innovation that enables the decoder to produce accurate and coherent outputs in tasks like machine translation and text generation. First, contextual understanding. The decoder uses self-attention to analyze relationships between tokens in the output sequence. By calculating attention scores, it determines which tokens are most relevant for the current prediction. This is vital because, in natural language, the meaning of a word often depends on its context. For example, in a sentence like, the bank is on the river, the model can focus on nearby tokens to clarify whether bank refers to a financial institution or a river bank. This ability significantly improves the decoder's understanding of context. Second, masked attention. One critical feature in the decoder is masked self-attention. Why it's important. When generating a sequence, the decoder must only rely on tokens it has already predicted, not ones it hasn't yet generated. 
masking ensures that future tokens are hidden during training, forcing the decoder to produce outputs sequentially and logically, just like writing a sentence word by word. This property prevents information leakage and ensures coherence in tasks like text generation or translation. Third, dynamic relevance. Self-attention dynamically adjusts the decoder's focus at each step. The model evaluates all previously generated tokens and determines their relevance to the current word it's predicting. For instance, if the decoder is generating the word apple in a sentence about fruits, it may prioritize earlier tokens like fruit or red over unrelated ones like table. This adaptability ensures that each prediction aligns with the broader context of the sentence. 4. Integration with encoder outputs. The decoder doesn't work in isolation. In addition to self-attention, it uses cross-attention to interact with the encoder's outputs. Through this mechanism, the decoder aligns its predictions with the input sequence. For example, in a translation task, cross-attention helps the decoder focus on the specific parts of the input sentence that are most relevant for generating the corresponding output. This integration creates a strong connection between the input and output, improving accuracy and consistency. 5. Multi-head attention. Transformers use multi-head attention in both the encoder and decoder. This means the model runs multiple attention mechanisms simultaneously. Each attention head focuses on different aspects of the data. For example, one head might analyze word-to-word -word relationships, while another looks at phrase-level patterns. By combining these diverse perspectives, Multi-head attention enables the decoder to capture complex dependencies in the sequence, enhancing its performance. Next, let me discuss why using multiple encoder and decoder layers in a transformer model is so effective. Adding more layers helps the model process information in increasingly sophisticated ways, making it better at handling complex tasks like translation, summarization, and text generation. Let's go through the key advantages step by step. First, hierarchical feature learning. Each layer in a transformer builds on the one before it, allowing the model to learn progressively more detailed representations. Lower layers focus on simple patterns and relationships, such as identifying word pairs or local dependencies. Higher layers capture deeper, more abstract connections, like understanding entire phrases or sentence-level meanings. This hierarchy is essential for complex data, where understanding requires moving from small details to big-picture context. Second, improved contextualization. As information moves through each encoder layer, the model refines its understanding of each token in context. Each layer processes the outputs from the previous one, adding new insights and adjusting token representations. This iterative refinement means that by the time a token reaches the top layer, it's enriched with information about its role and relationships across the entire sequence. This deeper context helps the model grasp nuances in meaning, especially in long or complicated sentences. 3. Enhanced attention mechanisms. Having multiple layers allows the transformer to use its attention mechanisms more effectively. Multi-head attention. Each attention head in a layer can focus on different parts of the sequence. For example, one head might track word order, while another analyzes semantic connections. Layered attention. Passing through multiple layers lets the model revisit tokens repeatedly, reevaluating their importance and fine tuning attention weights. This ensures that the model doesn't miss subtle relationships and provides more accurate outputs. Four. Better handling of long-distance dependencies. Transformers are excellent at capturing long-range dependencies, connections between tokens that are far apart in the sequence. With multiple layers, the model can track these relationships even better. For example, in translating a long sentence, it might remember a subject introduced early on when generating the predicate much later. This ability is critical for tasks where meaning depends on context spread across the sequence. Five. Increased model capacity. Adding layers increases the transformer's capacity to learn. A deeper model can handle larger datasets and identify intricate patterns that shallower models might miss, 
This makes it more powerful for solving complex problems, whether it's generating a poem or summarizing a dense scientific paper. 6. Regularization through depth. Interestingly, having more layers can also help the model generalize better. Instead of memorizing exact patterns from the training data, the deeper architecture encourages it to learn broader, more transferable features. This improves its ability to perform well on new, unseen data, a must for real-world applications. Next, let me discuss the importance of positional encodings in transformer models. Transformers process all tokens in parallel rather than sequentially, unlike RNN, which inherently maintain positional information as they process input step by step. Without positional encodings, transformers wouldn't know the order of tokens in a sequence. Why positional encodings? Are necessary? Transformers treat input as a set of tokens processed simultaneously, which means they lack a built-in sense of sequence. Positional encodings add order information to tokens, ensuring that the model can understand their position in the sequence. For example, in a sentence, swapping I am with am I changes the meaning entirely. Capturing this kind of structure is what positional encodings enable. Several key functions of positional encodings. First, representing order. Each token is assigned a unique positional encoding that reflects its location in the sequence. This helps the model understand relationships between tokens based on their order, which is crucial for tasks like translation or summarization, where sequence determines meaning. Second, mathematical basis. Positional encodings are calculated using sine and cosine functions. Let me show you the formulas, even dimensions and odd dimensions. Pause is the position of the token in the sequence. I is the dimension of the encoding vector. D model is the size of the input embeddings. This approach ensures that each position has a unique encoding and that transitions between positions are smooth. 3. Learning relative positions. The sinusoidal design of positional encodings allows the model to easily compute relationships between positions. For example, the encoding at position k can relate directly to the encoding at k plus n. This helps the model learn how tokens relate not just in absolute terms, but relatively as well. 4. Combining with input embeddings. Before tokens are processed by the transformer layers, positional encodings are added to their embeddings. This step blends semantic information from the embeddings with order information from the positional encodings, giving the model a richer representation to work with. 5. Normalized values. The sine and cosine functions generate values within the range negative 1 to 1, keeping the positional encodings well scaled. This avoids issues that could arise if large position values were used directly, maintaining stability in training and processing. Let's consider a simple example of how positional encoding is applied to a sequence of words. Suppose we have the sentence, I am a Superman, and we want to apply positional encoding to it. Here's how it would work. First step, convert each word to its embedding vector. Second step, calculate positional encodings for each position, assuming a simplified version of the formula. Third step, add the positional encodings to the word embeddings. The resulting vectors now contain both semantic information from the word embeddings and positional information from the encodings. This allows the transformer model to differentiate between the same word appearing in different positions and to understand the sequential nature of the input.